Hi everybody, I'm not on your screen. I'm Marianne Monrach with the Speculative Literature Foundation and I'm here today with writer Walter John Williams. I know Walter because we both write together in George R. R. Martin's Wildcard series, um, which is a very fun shared world. But Walter is uh, the author of many, many books. Um, his most recent is Lord Quillifer, uh, Unconventional High Fantasy. Um, and it is a part of a series, but can be read uh, as a standalone. So uh, I'm really excited to read this. It looks like a lot of fun. That one just came out. So, but today he's going to talk to us um, about some aspects of craft, um, which he calls the three R's. The three R's, yes. All right. Um, I should point out just as brief commercial interruption mm -hmm. uh, that I teach with Nancy Cress at a yearly workshop every summer. Uh, in the mountains of New Mexico called Taos Toolbox, yep. in which we cover this and many other uh, ways to make your work more awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, actually, I'll, I'll note that I love Nancy as a teacher. I haven't studied with her, mm -hmm. but I read her essay in Those You Can, I think it was, mm -hmm. yeah. about um, plotting one damn thing after another, and it yeah. was just a terrific essay. Nancy so. is an absolutely brilliant teacher, much more brilliant than I am. Oh, shh. Well, we're, <laughs> well, we're delighted to have you with us today, so I'm, I'm looking forward, and we will link to Taoist Toolbox in the show notes. Okay, so. perfect. Um, as I was saying, this is for the three R's for writers, and the three R's are reveals, reversals, and raising the stakes. Uh, any of which can be deployed uh, alone or in sequence or simultaneously uh, to uh, make your work more awesome and make it more exciting and surprising. So let's start with raising the stakes. Raising the stakes is otherwise known as things get worse. <laughs> the situation grows more complicated, more desperate, and has more significance the farther into the story you go. And the obstacles the protagonist has to overcome get bigger, the menaces get more menacing, and the prize gets bigger. Uh, for example, um, Robert Heinlein's juvenile novel from the 50s, Have Space Suit Will Travel. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, Kip's problem is to get to college. He needs to raise money. So he uh, enters a, 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 a contest. Um, and he gets second place. And first place mm -hmm. would be enough money to get him through college. Second place is a used spacesuit. <laughs> so he thinks, well, at least I can fix up this spacesuit and sell it. <laughs> and he fixes it up, and just before he decides to sell it, he decides to go for a, a walk in it, just in his own neighborhood. And he is uh, picked up by a UFO and carried off to the moon. <laughs> okay, that's raising the stake number one. Uh, then his problem is to escape captivity on the moon, which he does. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he's recaptured, stakes raised again, yeah. um, and, then he, and then he's moved to Pluto, and he has to signal the interstellar police from Pluto in order to save Earth from invasion. That's raising the stakes a lot. Um, and then he is put on trial before the uh, galactic court, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and in which he has to save the human race from annihilation. Yep. Now that's about as high a stakes raising as you can go, and it is all plausible. Uh, you know, once you accept the initial premises, um, Heinlein did this a lot in the Star Beast. Uh, he starts out with a teenage boy trying to save his alien pet and ends up with a confrontation between Earth and a powerful interstellar civilization. Um, in Double Star, uh, he starts with a down at heels actor agreeing to impersonate a kidnapped politician for a few days, and the days keep getting longer as the politician falls ill and eventually dies. And in order to save civilization, the actor has to keep up his impersonation for the rest of his life. So that stakes raised throughout. Um, the movie Juno mm -hmm. uh, starts with the teenage heroine getting pregnant, which raises the stakes considerably right at the outset. She decides to give up the child and finds an upper middle class family who need a child, but the stakes get raised again when later in her pregnancy the couple splits up. Mm -hmm. And so she has to face a whole new momentous series of decisions. Um, Spider-Man? Uh, Peter Parker starts out with typical teenage problems. He gets bitten by a radioactive spider. He develops superpowers. And in an attempt to buy a car and impress the girl he's got a crush on, he gets involved in a cage fight with a wrestler. He's cheated out of his winnings, then refuses to intervene when somebody steals the gate. Uh, the stakes get raised when he finds out the thief has killed his Uncle Ben. Uh, then he finds out the girl he's in love with is going with his best friend, who is secretly the Green, or the green Goblin, who is his best friend's dad. Kidnaps is on May, and then later kidnaps Mary Jane, and stakes are raised everywhere you look. Okay, 
when you raise the stakes, the narrative tension increases, the reader is all the more involved in the story. Okay, care should be taken that the stakes aren't raised in ways that violate the reader's trust, which I had always felt happened in Frank Herbert's God Emperor of Dune. Um, the Emperor is presented as knowing the future, because his whole family does, right? But because it amuses him, he decides not to view the future of one of his relatives. Mm -hmm. Who is the one involved in a plot to kill him? So I feel that was cheating. Mm -hmm. um, Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. I'm not going to throw you off here. Um, so I recently tried to write commercial science fiction, uh -huh. right? And I, I typically have done more intimate family stories, okay. right? And so it's possible to do both. I I think it is. Yeah. But I when I gave the the book to my agent, his uh, he gave it back to me and basically said that it, it was it was pretty much fundamentally broken. It wasn't working because I had tried to do a you know world saving story, uh -huh. but I had um, kind of like shoved it onto a character and a set of circumstances that were mm -hmm. not plausible, that mm -hmm. like, you know, it didn't make any sense for her to be the person at the center of this, et cetera. So, right. so, so when you're doing the stakes raising, you talked about Heinlein, about his examples being one where it made, it made mm -hmm. sense at uh -huh. every stage of half space suit will travel okay. that this kid would end up in this position. Do you feel like, I don't know, do you have any tips for trying to well, make sure that... I, I, well, look at the opening scenes of Star Wars, the original film. Okay. You know, it's, it's a farm boy down on a desert planet, right? Mm -hmm. And he gets the message yeah. that he has to set out on a quest. Mm -hmm. uh, and he does. You know, it's, it's nothing that he does. It's something that happens to him. The plot happens to him. Mm -hmm. And it isn't until the very end that he takes control, if then. Yeah, I feel like that was so, so. Like he's kind of like a chosen figure, though, right? Like he yeah. he had secret powers, and like it was like the king Maybe revealed kind of thing. Powers. But yeah, so yeah, but you know, you want to plausibly foreshadow anything that your character can do okay. outside of the ordinary. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So if she needs to do some gymnastics later on, you know, start out in a parkour championship. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. That's helpful. Thank yeah. you. Okay. All right. Um, now, uh, reveals, the okay. second R, also called plot, plot twists and or epiphanies, uh, or as Aristotle called it, agnagnorisis. Mm. Um, nice. This, this isn't new. I don't know, but <laughs> pulling out the Greek, it's impressive. Yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> the origin is in theater. Okay. Uh, which is why Aristotle was commenting on it in the first place. Okay. Uh, a reveal is a scene in which either the reader or the character or both mm -hmm. is given a piece of information or makes a realization that causes them to reevaluate everything that has gone on before. Mm -hmm. Okay, reveals keep the narrative from plotting directly from one point to another and often sends it in another direction entirely. Uh, this comes from theater in which there's a curtain. You don't know what's mm -hmm. behind the curtain. Uh, action goes on, the curtain is pulled back, and suddenly you're in another place. Mm -hmm. That is very different from where you were before. So, reveals are the staple of whodunit mystery novels, mm -hmm. where the entire point is for the detective to reveal the villain at the end. Um, revelations abound in classical literature. Oedipus reveals his own past. Arthur is revealed to be the rightful king of Britain. Mm -hmm. Lord Riven is revealed to be an, a vampire in The Vampire. Mm -hmm. Rose Maley is revealed to be Oliver Twist's aunt. The author of Pip's Great Expectations is revealed to be Magwitch. The prince is revealed to be the pauper and vice versa. Mm. Um, Heinlein was good at this one too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in Star Beast, there's a huge revelation when the protagonist's pet is revealed to be an alien overlord, and which is, which is doing a reveal and raising the stakes at the same time. There's actually uh, a similar moment in Lilo and Stitch, right, where mm -hmm. she finds this little alien creature, right. but then it's revealed to be like a criminal mastermind, right, right yeah. and that the and the cops are trying to. And come that's and done take wonderfully when when he's playing with your blocks yeah. and is creating a whole city and then turns into Godzilla and destroys it. That's right. right? And that's, <laughs> I thought that was beautifully done. Yeah. Um, there are huge plot twists in movies like Psycho, mm -hmm. Planet of the Apes, The Crying Game, The Sixth Sense. Uh, in Memento, a uh, film I recommend to you all, just for because it's just an awesome piece of plotting, the protagonist has a mental defect which causes him to forget the revelations within seconds of learning them. So it's only the audience that experiences the full effect and can understand the whole story. And this adds irony to revelation, which is an interesting combination. 
Okay, reveals can also be personal, as in The Dead by James Joyce, a classic mm -hmm. short story, where the character realizes that he's emotionally dead. Uh, or in A Little Cloud, also by James Joyce, where the character realizes that his baby son has supplanted him in his wife's affections. Um, when you do a big reveal, you don't want to just spring it on the reader unless you're looking for shock. Mm -hmm. This is why the writing gods invented foreshadowing. So that you could spring a surprise on the reader, but do it fairly. We, in the sixth sense, and I hope I'm not spoiling the movie for you, <laughs> we find out that Bruce Willis's character in the sixth sense is dead. And we get the hints over the whole movie, and when the reveal occurs, the director walked us back through all the clues. Yeah, I feel like that's, you know, I have friends who are murder and mystery writers, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's the toughest part of their job, because they have to do that for kind of every book. When you get to the end, mm -hmm. and it's revealed who done it, yeah. you should have this moment of, oh, of course, mm -hmm. right? Like, all yeah. of the little clues will suddenly click into place. And right. you want to, like, the ideal thing is to have the reader figure it out Maybe just before it's revealed. Mm -hmm. That would be fabulous. If then, yeah. yeah right? So. Yes. Um, and there are there is art to hiding clues. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have another talk about that, but that's not for today. <laughs> okay, so... We'll just have to make you come back. <laughs> okay, so we knew, know about Magwitch's relation with Pip ahead of time in Great, Revel mm -hmm. Great Expectations, Great Revelations nice title also but we've got so many clues that Lord Riven is a vampire that the narrator seems really dense for not getting it mm. um, okay a combination of reveals and raising the stakes is your best bet to maintaining reader involvement mm. okay the Da Vinci Code is by almost any other standards a dreadful book it's got cardboard characters contrived situations unbelievable action but it has reveals aplenty mm. and the stakes are raised throughout and millions of people read the book and liked it yeah Okay, anything else before I go on to the next R? Well, I think I would just point out that I, I think from, so when Harry Potter came out, mm -hmm. the, I stayed up to like 4 a.m. Uh -huh. reading it, which was the first time I'd done that in so many years, right? Mm -hmm. And so later I went back to try and figure out like, what was it that she did to keep me so engaged? Mm -hmm. Part of it is, is, is this raising the stakes and reveals that you're talking yeah, right. about here, mm -hmm. right? In the, in the opening chapter, Someone's trying to deliver a letter to Harry, and it just gets, as his aunt and uncle are styming it, mm. uh, the letter's delivery, the question of what's in the letter just gets more and more intense. And, mm -hmm. you know, you get to this point where they're, like, on a raft in the uh -huh. middle of the ocean, and, like, floods of letters are falling on top right. of them, right? So it's clearly incredibly important. And then there's the big reveal at the end of the chapter um, that it's an invitation mm -hmm. to this wizard school, but then immediately there's this he's not allowed to go and, and so, people forget about the actual first chapter or preface or whatever mm -hmm. it was where the infant harry potter is delivered to oh, the dursleys yeah. by several wizards who have this kind of enigmatic conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> about what was going on that's right um and that also sets you up that there are lots of things that are going to yeah. be revealed later in the story um but yes and also in harry potter you get reveals that aren't plot critical, but are kind of wonderful. Mm -hmm. You get to sit in this beautiful magical world yeah. <laughs> that is revealed to you just as it's being revealed to Harry. Um, so, you know, and that doesn't, not, that doesn't necessarily advance the plot or make the plot more exciting, but it does reveal the world to you. And it works, I mean, you were saying for reader engagement, it's, mm -hmm. it's very engaging, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, next we have reversals, or as Aristotle called them, peripatia. <laughs> Um, Peripatia just means walking back and forth, mm -hmm. by the way. It's what, um, there's a school of philosophy called the Peripatetics, mm -hmm. uh, who are also called the Stoics nowadays, but in the, in the day they were called the Peripatetics, and that's mm -hmm. because they were walking back and forth while delivering their lectures. Nice. I okay. didn't know that. Yeah. I, know the, I know the word Peripatetic, but I did not know of its connection to the Stoics, yeah. so that's cool. So, yes, and they would, they would walk back and forth under a Stoa, which is basically a pergola. You know, it's just a shady spot because it's warm in nice. ancient Greece. Um, so reveals often lead to reversals in which the action takes an unexpected turn or in which characters suddenly act in strikingly different ways from what you've been led to expect. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Macbeth, the revelation that Burnham Wood has come to Dunsinane results in a reversal of Macbeth's fortune. In Oedipus, the revelation that Oedipus has killed his father and married his mother results in Oedipus blinding himself and abandoning his kingdom. 
In Hamlet, Hamlet's reversal occurs when he has a chance to kill Claudius, but decides against it. And this sets up an inevitable tragic ending for the whole cast. Uh, reversals are also common in comedy. Uh, in When Harry Met Sally, the characters realize that they're in love only after they spent most of the movie disagreeing with each other. Uh, in Tootsie, the Dustin Hoffman character begins as a misogynistic exploiter of women until he lives as a woman for a while, and then he becomes a better human being. Not a perfect one, but better. Mm -hmm. um, in Lord of the Rings, there are major reversals when Gandalf dies, when Boromir is seduced by the ring, when Gandalf returns, when the Ents enter the action, mm -hmm. at the climax of all the battle scenes, mm -hmm. uh, when Frodo is taken by Shelob and Sam, a supporting character, has to become the hero, mm -hmm. uh, when our heroes come to Mount Doom, and when Saruman is revealed to be the corrupter of the Shire at the very end. Yeah. Okay, there are reversals of character in The Godfather when Michael Corleone decides to enter his father's criminal world in order to seek vengeance on his enemies. There's a reversal of characters in the first Star Wars film when Han Solo enters the fight for the Death Star and saves Luke's life. Because the last you saw him, he was leaving. Right. He was saying, I've got my reward. Thank you. Have fun with your war. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, in the Maltese Falcon, there is a reversal of character in the scene where Sam Spade sends Bridget to prison. Because up till that point, he's behaved as if he's no better than the criminals. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's... It's a surprise that he's kind of a good guy. Yeah. Um, in Casablanca, Rick undergoes a reversal of character in the final scene. So does Captain Louis Reyna. Okay, and care should be taken, as always, to foreshadow any reversals you make. Uh, so, um, those are the three R's, and I hope you can profit by them. <laughs> profit greatly. I can't yeah. think if I have any good questions about reversals. I think that the only thought I had was that I think this is a very, uh, it's almost required in a romance, right? Mm -hmm. that oh, you, yeah, absolutely. That you kind of start off, I, I know my students often talk about the sort of like enemies to lovers trope, which is, mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah. you know, in this this moment or like in Pride and Prejudice at the beginning where they, you know, they meet each other and mm -hmm. they're, they're disgusted by each other and then, <laughs> yeah. um, and then they have to overcome their own character flaws in right. order to... Um, be able to fall in love, right? Or in Sense and Sensibility, the the thing that's standing in their way is not their character. I mean, to some extent, her character a little bit, but 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 more like societal, economic, and other mm. pressures, right? right? That yeah. then have to be overcome in order to um, suddenly make it possible. So and, there there are a yeah. ton of reversals actually, and the, and the reversals are foreshadowed very interestingly, particularly yeah. Pride and Prejudice, mm -hmm. because. Um, uh, Darcy is is behaving kind of abominably towards most of the cast, mm -hmm. and then when Elizabeth's little sister runs off with the guy that Darcy, uh, the the abusive mm -hmm. character, um, Darcy has been kind of hiding him, mm -hmm. right? And Elizabeth calls him out, right? Says, "This is what you've been doing," and then Darcy suddenly realizes. Yeah what he's done wrong and how to behave and how to become an acceptable hero mm -hmm. to Elizabeth's heroine. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it's interesting, like there's, you talked at the beginning about kind of keeping the reader's trust and, and you know, earning the the raising of the stakes and mm -hmm. so on, but it, it, it seems to apply here too, right? With the, the reversals, we don't want them to be they can be surprising, mm -hmm. but they have to make sense. Yes, they have if to, they are if right. they are completely surprising, you have to explain them yeah. later. Right. So, well, I think those are those are three fabulous techniques, and now I think I'm going to just try to get my students to incorporate them okay. uh, in their stories. So, uh, right. that'd be good good practice for them. Yeah, it's been fun. Thanks so much, sure. Walter, and uh, everybody. You should go read Lord Quillifer, and of course. Wild cards, um, <laughs> and if you want more of Walter, um, we're tomorrow we're going to we're currently at ICFA a conference in Florida. Tomorrow we're going to be recording um, a talk about shared worlds. Um, so by the time you see this, it will have been recorded um, and should be available on the SLF's YouTube channel where Walter and David Levine and I, who all write for Wild Cards, mm -hmm. will be talking with Ellen Kushner and Delia Sherman about yeah. writing in shared worlds. So, okay. Excellent. Right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.